Hi folks, and welcome to this short lecture on warrants. What exactly are warrants? Well, they're like stock rights, in a sense that they do allow us the privilege to buy common shares at a later date. But the warrants we're talking about here are a special kind of stock right, in that they're usually detachable from the bond itself. So they're a little bit different than stock rights that are attached to convertible bonds because the warrants can trade separately. Recall with convertible bonds, any of the stock rights that were attached to it, when we decided to exercise our rights, we also had to remove any part of the bonds to, w that w to which those rights were attached and then issue the common shares. Here it's very different. Warrants can trade separately apart from the bond and we can trade them for common shares without retiring the bond. Again, this was not the case with convertible debt. Warrants are usually valid for a much longer period of time than our stock rights. So stock rights usually have an expiry date. But in many cases, warrants are valid for a longer period and may not even expire. Warrants are exercised for shares and when that happens, there's a cash payment that's made by the investor to the issuer in order to exercise the warrants. So why don't we take a look at the example we have in front of us here. This is an example on Ferguson Company or Ferguson Memorials and they issued a 1000 or a 1 million dollar 5% annual interest non-convertible bond okay so we're just emphasizing the fact that it's not convertible debt we're talking about here we're talking about a regular bond that has detachable warrants now I've highlighted here that one warrant is attached to each thousand dollar bond because we'll be using that fact a little bit later how well, if one warrant is attached to each $1,000 bond, start thinking about how many $1,000 bonds do you have in this entire $1 million bond offering. Well, you have 1,000 bonds valued at $1,000. So that means if one warrant is attached to each $1,000 bond, that means we have the right at a future date to exercise one, uh, to exercise 1,000 warrants. Okay, now those warrants are going to allow us to buy as the investor two common shares for $28 at any time over the next 10 years. The existing price of the Ferguson shares are $18 a share and the bond issue with the warrants sells for 104. 104 means that the bond with the warrants trades at 4% above par, 1.04 times $1 million. So therefore, in order to record the warrants and with the bond with the warrants, we would have got an amount of cash of $1,040,000. So that's basically your $1 million times 1.04, right? Which is based on this guy here. Okay, now we know that the bonds alone trade for 102, okay, and the warrants trade for 32. We've just determined how much cash we, we got from the investors when we bought the entire thing. The question becomes, how do we allocate this cash that we got between the bond and the detachable stock warrants? Well, we use a method called the proportional method. So we're going to use the market values or the fair values of the bond and the warrant itself and take them as a percentage of the total market values of the bond and the warrant together and use those ratios to allocate the cost, which is $1,040,000. So now, the question tells us that the warrants can trade independently for $32 each and the bonds alone can sell for 102. So if we do this math, we find out that the market value of each of the bond and the warrant together are 1,052,000. So now, the question becomes, what percentage is this 32,000 of the entire market value of the warrant plus bond? Well, we've done a quick calculation here, and we've rounded it to zero decimal places, which gives us 3%. We can also find, obviously, that the balance, the 1,020,000, which is the market value of the bond, as a percentage of the 1,052,000, must be 97%. So we can apply those specific percentages to... 1,040,000. It might be easier maybe to see it if we actually just 
do a little arrow here so you can see we're applying that 3% to the 1,040 in order to get 31,200, right? We're also going to apply the 97% to that same cost, which is 1,040,000, ,000, and that's going to give us 1,000,000. 8800. So that's how we would allocate the cost under the proportional method. Therefore, if we now start to take these numbers and enter them into our journal entry, after we've made the debit to cash, what do we notice? Well, the bond payable, we're going to set it up at its face value. So this amount for 8800, this amount over here, okay, right there, I'll just do it in purple and bold it. This little piece here, this 8,800, that has to be the premium on the bond, okay? And therefore, the value of the warrants we've already established at cost are 31,200. So now we have a balanced position. And that's how you would make a journal entry to record the issue of a bond with detachable warrants. Now, let's look at requirement two. Requirement two is a theory question, and they're asking us to discuss the difference between a convertible bond and a bond with detachable warrants. Well, first of all, the warrant can be detached from the related bond and it can trade separately. They can be exercised independently of the bond themselves, which don't forget, when you have stock rights on a convertible bond, those rights are embedded into the convertible bond. They don't trade separately. And again, this is not true for the conversion rights, as we said that were embedded into a bond. The detachable warrant is easier to value than the option because it has a value separate from those bonds, and they can trade independently. So those are some of the differences between convertible bonds and a bond with a detachable warrant. So now, let's have a look at requirement three. Now we're going to assume that some of the warrants are exercised in some lapse. In our case, we're going to assume that 60% are exercised and 40% lapse. They didn't give us a date, so we're not going to date the journal entries. But we can make the entry. Now, how do we value the warrants that are actually exercised? Well, we actually know the value of the warrants already. We determined up here that we set the warrants up in our books at cost of 31200 So if 60% of them are now coming off the market because we're going to issue shares when we uh, exercise those warrants, we're going to take off 31200 times 60%, which is $18,720. So we're going to remove or debit the detachable stock warrants for 18720 And don't forget, they are part of your contributed capital. Okay, They're equity instruments, so they are part of your contributed capital. Now, what else are we going to do? Well, we know that we would have got cash for them as well. Well, how do we know how much cash we got? Well, don't forget, we know that every million do the million dollar bond was divided up into 1,000 1, dollar bonds, right? And we said that we have one warrant attaching to each 1,000 dollar bond. So that means we must also have 1,000 warrants. Now, the question told us that if 60% of those warrants were exercised and we have a total of 1,000 warrants, i.e. one warrant attached to each $1,000 bond, then that means we're exercising 60% of the entire number of warrants, which is 600. Now don't forget, each warrant allows us to buy two shares at $28 a share. So we are exercising 600 warrants. For each of those 600, we're allowed to get two shares. And each of those shares, um, we're, allowed, we're allowed to get those shares for $28 a share. Again, let's go back to the question to make sure you understand. It says here, the holder can buy two common shares at any time over the next 10 years for every one warrant, okay? So, and it says that's the price, okay, that we can buy the shares at with the warrants. So now what we're going to do is we're going to exercise or we're going to convert those warrants into shares. So we're going to remove them from the books, take in our cash of 33600 which is what this number comes to. Again, we're having to pay that to the issuer as the investor because now we're exercising 600 warrants. Each warrant is going to give us two shares 
and each share is valued at 20 or, or is is exercisable at $28 a share. So therefore we have to give up 33,600 as the investor. So we're going to value the common shares at their book value 52,320. Now, what do we do with the ones that lapse? Well, the 40% that lapse, okay, these guys here, okay, the ones that lapse, they're valued at 12,000. Oh, sorry, they're valued, I should be up here, they're valued at 12,840. How do we know? Because there's $31,200 in warrants, right, in total, and 40% of them lapse. So we remove them from the books, and now we're going to credit a contributed capital account for lapsed detachable warrants, okay, the lapsed ones. The reason why we set these up as lapsed is because, don't forget, when the investor paid 104 for the bond, that included the warrants, so we technically, as the issuer, got money for them. So that account's not going to close. It's That contributed capital account is going to stay on the books. So we have to, if we're getting rid of those warrants or if they lapse, the fact of the matter is the investor has still paid us something for it. So our credit now is going to be to the lapsed detachable stock warrants in the same amount as the value we calculated up here. Okay. Now the other thing you can do if you want, your textbook does it this way, but it's up to you. Um, I do them as two separate ent entries, the exercise and the lapse. If you so choose, you can do them as one entry, okay, because you still know you're going to get 33600 You know the total dollar value of the warrants that are coming off the market are 31200 which is the total of this 18720 and this 12480 Right. We also know that 40% of them are going to lapse, so we're going to credit the contributed capital for lapsed rights or lapsed warrants, 12,480. And then the common shares based on the book value method would be the residual, which is 52,320. Okay. And that concludes our presentation on, um, on warrants.